YW friends, I'm Renee and this is Pat and this is Carrie and we're here to do a core fit workout, a short workout that you could do by yourself, by itself or you, should, you could tag it on to another workout, sort of double up or triple up depending on how you feel. So I'm going to start with a, a little itty bitty warm up and we'll take you through all the different spots on the core. The core is everything from shoulders to hips. So we're going to go cover the front, we're going to do some stuff for the sides and for the back of course. Let's get down on our hands and knees at first and we'll take a little itty bitty warm up. So hands or fists if you need to, if your wrists are bothering you, can be up on the fists if you want, or sort of starfish hands. Separate your knees about hip width apart, shoulders, um, or hands are underneath your shoulders, no matter if they're on fists or the starfish kind of formation. And let's just take a little cat cow, everyone. Let's take an inhale and drop your belly. Push out your chest, push up your butt a little bit, and then exhale, let's tuck in the tail and tuck in the chin and lift high and round in the back. Do that a few times. And it doesn't have to correspond with inhaling and exhaling, but if it does, that's cool. We're just going to ease into this. Now, if you're kind of tight and sore and stiff, take it really easy. You will eventually become a little bit more pliable, a little bit more limber. Give yourself a moment. And then we'll take it from here and kind of sort of play on that cat-cow move. Let's look over one shoulder. Take a look over your left shoulder and your left hip, and then take a look over your right shoulder and your right hip and kind of sway your butt a little bit. And again, this can be really dramatic looking or not so dramatic if you're kind of tight. Give yourself a second, have a little patience so you can warm up a couple more times with that tail wagging business. Nice. Next, drop your butt back over your heels if you can, or as far back as you can. Reach out as far forward as you can. Nice long stretch here. If you want, drop your head all the way to the floor for a little, uh, little child's pose stretch. And now, let's just take a little trip forward and back. Take an inhale if you want, move forward, flatten out your spine, it's super straight and long, and then exhale your way back over your heels. Take an inhale, come forward. We'll do this a couple more times. All the way back, stretch a little here. Forward. Let's go one more time. Take it all the way back. And all the way forward, nice. Now what I want you to do is move your hands back underneath your shoulders. Knees are still about hip width apart, so we're in a perfect position here with a nice flat tabletop-like back. If you can, pick up your right arm and your left leg. And maybe you can stick them out a little bit, but maybe you can reach all the way out. Hold them out there in space for a moment. Lots of work for the back, holding up these heavy limbs. If you can, stretch nice and long. If you can, level off your hips. And if you can't, do the best you can. Draw them back in, put them underneath your shoulder and hip respectively, and then pick up your left arm and your right leg and pull them out. Maybe you're just here, that's okay. Maybe you're all the way out. Stretching and reaching a little bit. Good, now put those limbs down and we're gonna go just a little bit faster. Reach out with the right arm and the left leg and put them down. Reach out with the left arm and the right leg. And let's just do this for a while. If you get tired, take a break. So I, I don't like to count often in my core fit class. If you wanna count, you can. You can make yourself a little mini goal of doing so many repetitions. But let's focus on keeping the hips level reaching out as far as we can and knowing that your back is working really hard keeping the limbs up in the air. All right, folks, I'm gonna give you some variations on this theme. The next time you pick up your left arm and your right leg, maybe you, you stretch them out and keep them there, maybe you reach back and try to touch your foot. And if you don't touch, that's okay. You come in the same neighborhood, reach back out again, put those limbs down. Right arm, left leg, try the same thing, reach out, and maybe you get sort of closer, maybe you actually touch. Reach back out, put them down. Again, if you want, I got another option for you. If you're really feeling frisky about stuff, let me finish off this right arm, left leg combination. Next time you pick up your left arm and your right leg, maybe you start them at six and 12 o'clock and then sweep them out to nine and three o'clock, trying to keep everything level. That's when it's hard, I think. Take it back to 12 and six. Put them down. Try it with the right arm and the left leg. And if these uh, variations don't work out for you, go back to this the straight, straight six and 12 o'clock position. That's plenty of work without all this fancy stuff. I'm gonna try it one more time with each set of limbs. How you guys doing back there with that sweeping it out like the hands of a clock? Yeah. Sometimes that one's hard. Good. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Carrie. All right. Nice. Let's sit back and. Drop your butt back over your heels for a little stretch. Give your back a tiny little break there for a moment. 
And I'm gonna work the sides. Let's just, I'm just gonna easily flip towards you all out there. So pick a side to be up on. You can be on a forearm here. You could be on a straight arm. As far as your legs go, you could have a modified version here for a side plank with your bottom knee bent and your top leg straight. You could have two straight legs, scissored feet, and you can also have two straight legs with stacked feet with this forearm or a straight arm, whatever you want. I'm gonna take a forearm and I'm gonna take a bent leg down here. So we're coming up into a side plank, nice and flat, hips off the ground, arm up in the air. Thanks folks back there, because you know it was coming, didn't you? We're gonna try this first. We're gonna try taking those top fingers, reaching them as far under your armpit as you can. Turn your shoulders and your hips if you want, bring it all the way back up. And now I will count to this one. Let's do four more of these. Let's reach through. That's one of four. Reach through. That's two. And this is three. And this is four. Now hold your side plank. Maybe your arm's in the air. Maybe your arm's going to rest here. Make it even more difficult. You could stretch it out this way. Make it even more difficult. You might even hold a leg in the air. Let's hold that for five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Nice. Let it down and we're going to switch it off. We'll try to do the same stuff on the other side. So now we don't have to talk about how to set it up because we just recreate what happened on the first side. I go with the forearm here. One of my legs was bent before on the other side. Get yourself really flat and really long arm up in the air. Hips up off the ground. Sometimes people think you should do a side plank and your hips are down here. They're up here. Let's reach through five times, nice and slow. Reach through. Don't be afraid to pivot your whole set of your whole shoulder blades and your hips as well. There's one. We're gonna do five total here. Reach through and reach up nice and slow. Two. And three. Four. Nice with the two straight legs back there and five. Now we're gonna hold this position. Could be arm up here, could be arm right here, could be arm overhead, could be leg up in the air too. So the longer your lever lengths are, the harder it is. Let's count for five, four, three, two, one. Nice, I'm looking at my, my, my friends back here. You're looking awesome back there. All right, so we covered a little bit from the back. We covered a little bit in the sides. Let's get these two sort of areas in the front of the belly. Let's turn around, lay down on your back, and let's cover the spot that gets ignored a little bit, this lower belly area. There's no special muscles down there. They're just the bottom half of a bunch of muscles that um, are on the front side of your body. So here's what we're gonna try to do. We could start by pointing the toes up in the air. Hands can be behind your head, glued elbows to the floor and your head to the floor. If you can't manage that, there's an acceptable cheat with your hands here at the sides. And yeah, those are probably the only two arm, arm situations, but if you find that you're lifting up your head, you've gotta have your arms at your sides and that'll, that'll stop that happening. Let's try our best to act like we're poking our toes straight up to the ceiling and picking up the hips from the floor. Up and down with as much control as you can. Now I'm giggling because there are some days when this is just so hard and you're so shaky and you're thinking, how in the heck am I gonna do this? It might look very explosive, that's okay. Do the best you can. Sooner or later, you'll get that control and you'll be able to lift and lower. Here's anybody picking that more, yeah, nobody took the uh, more advanced version. If you want, you can level off your shins. Pretend like there's a cup of hot water there on your shins. Try to do that same control, lift and lower. And it's harder here because we've got a little extra weight sticking out away from the center of gravity. And this one we'll just do until we're tired or for the next minute or two. I'm going back to that first version here. Yes. How are you guys doing? Seriously, when you're done, you're done. And that means just taking a break. Maybe you're popping back in, sneaking a few more repetitions in there. Nice. I got about three more in me, I think, here before I'm finished. Because otherwise, yeah, two and one. Awesome. Maybe a little teeny tiny baby stretch in between here. Hands to feet, arching your back on purpose. Let's get to the most familiar and tried and true version sit-ups. Let's do stuff for this upper portion of the front belly muscles here. You could have your hands behind your head. You could have them across your chest. You could have them in a little nest behind your head. You can even reach forward with either prayer hands or maybe outside of your knees. You choose, but let's do this. So let's start with the feet on the floor and we'll peel our skulls away from the floor and then peel the shoulder blades and then maybe even a little bit more of our back and then we'll lay it back down with the same kind of precision. We'll do them like that, nice and slow. Take it up and forward and down. 
you can keep a little bit of space here between your chin and your chest. You don't have to smash your chin to your chest. You don't have to thrust your chin up to the ceiling either. Keeping your head neutral. The way I do that is keeping my head heavy and my fingertips back here. But maybe you're here, lifting up and taking it down. And maybe you decided to make a little nest for your head and that actually solves the head problem there back there if you want. Now, let's talk about the variety of things you could be doing with your feet. Maybe you just take your heels up off the ground. This takes away a little bit of the stabilization from your butt. Maybe you pick up your feet altogether and level off your shins and take that same lifting and lowering. Maybe you're gonna turn this into an honest to goodness bicycle where you're gonna try to turn a, 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 an elbow to meet a knee while the other leg goes back out. And this bicycle maneuver here, still really slow and steady, could be up instead of out. And you could even do this. You could take out the upper body and kick out the lower body only, nice and slow, kicking one leg at a time. You could take out the lower body and just do the upper body, up and twist. Feet could be up or down. There's a zillion modifications here that you could do for this bicycle maneuver, but as long as you go slow, the load is on the whole time. Oh, and I'm feeling this probably more than anything else. <laughs> I didn't expect that today. And if you're done, you're done, and that is awesome. Now, one last little tidbit, a little bit of a cherry on the top here. Let's poke those toes. Let's all of us stick at the toes right up in the air. You can point your toes away or you can flex them towards you to make it a little bit easier, but let's just reach our fingers and touch our pinky toes without letting the shoulder girdle completely down. So a little, little pulsing kind of an action here. Cherry pickers, some people call this. Ah, okay, that's getting it. What do you think? I think yes, yes, yes. Oh yes. And then I'll do one more bit here. Let's take this for four more, three more, two more. And one more, good. All right, let's flip over, facing the mat. Now, some people, planks are your friends. For some of us, maybe we just, maybe we have a treaty with the plank, and maybe it's just, maybe it's just like, I'll participate as long as you just don't treat me too badly. So here's the deal, so a plank. Here's the most familiar version. You've got your toes on the ground, your straight arms underneath your shoulders, but there's a couple other things that you could be doing. You could be doing forearms if you want, maybe on your toes. You could be doing a plank on your hands or on your forearms and your knees as long as you're straight and tall, like this nice long line from knees all the way up to the head or perhaps from your heels all the way up to your head. So folks, we're gonna get into timing here. So this is one of the things, let's everybody pop up into their favorite version and it's okay to change your mind in the middle of it. Like, uh-oh, I think I just wanna come down here. That's okay. That's all right, let's hold it here for about a minute or so and let's check on a few things. It's perfectly okay if you're just a little bit rounded. Yes, it's ideal if you can be really flat. Here's what I don't want to see. I don't want to see sagging butts and sagging spines. If you can be right here, then you're firm, all the muscles working. If you want to add fancy pants stuff, take a set of toes, tap out, maybe really far out, maybe just a little bit out if you want. You can also hold a foot up in the air for a few seconds, let's say five seconds, and I'll keep track of that for you. And then maybe the other foot goes up. Nice option on your knees, holding a leg up in the air. It can still be done that way. Beautiful. And we are coming up on a minute here pretty soon. Let's say we're gonna go forward on the toe tips just a little bit and then back to the balls of the feet. And one more time, we have time for one more. Slide forward and back. And that is a plank. And that, folks, was 15 minutes of core. We covered it all. And you can stack this little core workout um, attach it to us some other workouts if you want to make it a little bit more interesting. And also you can attach it to your favorite cool down and your favorite warm up. YWCA, where we are on a mission to move.